This is Merlin for Mer World Cards. We are in Thousand Oaks at the Best Western. Today we're gonna to learn about what should a customer do when they are at a card show. Let's go find out. I have a special guest, my buddy, Dan. Now, Dan, have you ever been to a card show? This is my first card show I've ever been to in my entire life. So let's go inside, Dan, and let's find out how to be a customer at a card show. Let's go, Merlin. Always practice safe card dealing. Good job, Dan. And I'm with the promoter. I'm Diego Herrera. I put together the 805 Card Show. We're gonna post information about the next show, dates, locations. If you're looking to become a dealer, we'll have uh, all the dealer information there. Don't be afraid to DM, call, or text me. I'll answer right away and answer all your questions. It's kind of the first sports card show here in Ventura County. All the other card shows, you gotta drive an hour and a half out, two hours to San Diego, all around that area. I thought there are enough collectors in the area to where we can all come together and put a show here and do it every month for everybody and uh, all the families and kids. Hey Sam, I'm Merlin from World Cards. Oh, how good to see y'all. Did y'all see the video last night? Oh, oh yes. This, would be, this is the companion piece to that. <laughs> Woo. Oh my goodness. Now Joseph, I noticed you're about one of the only tables here that doesn't have sports cards. Why? I just never really was into sports as a kid. Um, I was more into the the nerdy stuff, I guess you would say. The Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic, uh, Dragon Ball Z was one of my biggest things growing up. And how is the card market for you? It's it's pretty good. Um, a lot of things sell. I run a TCG player account. I uh, get a lot of orders every day. I would say it's really great. What should a buyer expect when he comes to a card show? So as a buyer coming to a card show, all the dealers are going to have their cards priced out basically from the night before. I did all my cards two days before, so comps are all over the place and we're willing to work with you. If comps have dipped down on a player because of an injury, we'll work with you on a trade or the value of that trade. But Dealers tend uh, to keep up with the trends and their prices are pretty accurate. Always uh, don't be afraid to ask if they're open to offers because a lot of these dealers do have wiggle room. Um, I mean, just keep an open mind and just know it's, you know, not like, like going to like Walmart, whatever the price is, is what it is. It could be higher, it could be lower because the market fluctuates so much that it's really hard to say just because we priced, you know, this card yesterday doesn't mean today it didn't tank or didn't go way up you know what I mean so sometimes you win some sometimes you lose some but obviously the goal is to win you got no when the hold them. no when the fold them. No also just you know have a good attitude come up say hi talk a little bit because I think that's the thing with the shows too is everyone gets to kind of talk to each other face to face a lot of people haven't got to see each other or kind of forgot how to be social so if for us it's more of a social thing too like oh hey we get to talk to somebody that's into the same stuff we are so what would you say if a buyer comes up and just say points at the card right here and goes what's your best what's your lowest how do you react to that Basically, the first rule of business is you never give the first price. So if you, someone says, what's your best, you say, uh, throw me an offer and we'll work from there. Um, first of all, if they're looking for a discount, it never hurts just to be polite and say, what can you do on this card? That would be the best way. And then most dealers will let you know what they can do on the card as far as the price. Usually people are going to offer you 30% less of uh, eBay comps which is the general rule of thumb in this uh, industry, you can say. Dealers always have the wiggle room and you have your final say as a dealer. So don't be afraid to be uh, pushed over if someone comes off as uh, too strong. You can always say no 
and usually if you say no, they'll come up to your price or try to meet you in the middle. Yeah, and that's we always try to work with that. We, you know, first thing is like, well, what are you thinking? You know what I mean? Straight up, just ask them first. What do you? Because a lot of times they'll tell you pretty much right off the bat what they want to pay, and then we'll go see what we have it at and try to at least meet in the middle. And I think that's probably the greatest thing, best thing to do is meet in the middle because then you're both happy. You know what I mean? So it's just a little bit of negotiating, pretty much. I, I just try to, you know, haggle with them a little. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much a, a fair guy, honestly. If you tell me a price, if it's a fair price, then I will most likely say yes. So if a buyer comes and he brings a collection of cars, their PC, and they want to sell to you, what should they expect selling to a dealer at a card show? If you're coming as a seller to a card show, dealers are going to offer you 20 to 30% less of their recent eBay comps because as a dealer, you have to make your margin but then you also have to have a nice price to where they want to sell to you. A general rule of thumb is expect to get 70% value of your cards uh, whenever selling to a dealer. Don't expect the top dollar for it because, uh, I mean, everybody's here to make money, you know, and kind of resell or do what they're doing. I mean, don't also settle for just the lowest price. You, know, you don't want to give it away. So your best thing to do is just sit there, talk to them, see what, feel them out, um, and see what they're offering, what they're paying and kind of go from there. Well, first of all, the dealer, the dealers will probably look at it and see if it's something they can use. And then if it's something they can use, then they would make an offer on those cards. Or some dealers would just say, how much did you want for the whole thing? So my advice is to kind of figure out what you want on the collection because they may make you an offer on it and you may want to know what you want on it. One thing that they should they should expect to get around 50 to 70 percent of the card's market value. And that's because obviously we need to make a little bit of profit here and we can't give you full retail value of the card as much as we would like to. And how about trading with a dealer? Trading with the dealer, you're going to get a little bit more value up in those cards just because um, if you're invested in it at twenty dollars and it's a hundred dollar card, you have more wiggle room. I don't personally trade because I'm not good at it. So trading with a dealer, uh, if they're open to trades, is a great idea because you can get a little bit more value for your cards than you would uh, asking cash. I'd say definitely bring like names people are looking for uh, in every sport. Just kind of look who's doing good, who's kind of hot right now, what the dip and what the rise is in each card. Um, we also just try to bring like a variety of different prices like because there's different tiers of people wanting to spend money so i mean you have people from dollar cards to thousand dollar cards um so just bring kind of a variety of prices variety of players um pretty much a lot of sports that are in right now so obviously baseball is going right now basketball is going right now football is getting ready to go so that might be a good thing to bring a few football you know what i mean because people are going to try to buy why it's a little bit lower before football so now do you buy or trade from others yes i buy trade sell all, all of that thing you have to do your research and know like he said like who's popular right now because it one like he said depends on the sport and two it just depends on okay did this person get injured do people think he's going to come back because an injury a big injury can really tank the value of of the sports card itself and what kind of etiquette should a customer have when going to a card show just basically be a nice human being you know polite always asking questions um there's never a wrong question in this a lot of people are new to the hobby a lot of people have questions so don't be afraid to ask those questions and just try to be respectful to the dealer if they're not buying at the moment don't push them to buy if they're only selling just respect that be nice that's the biggest thing i can say be nice and it'll go a long way we get a lot of people that come up to us and want to trade right off the bat i think people actually do trading more than they do buying because a lot of people don't have money to buy you know cards and they might have had theirs for a little while so if you just come up they're interested in something they show you what they got you're interested then you kind of just go and make sure your prices are kind of equal and yours may be a little up or a little down but for the most part if you guys are happy with the card you're getting you're gonna trade and make that trade and then that's also a deal and that person might come back to you knowing you're good at you know trading great person to deal with and just come back and do that what is your pet peeve with customers my biggest pet peeve is when they uh come up to my table and they want like 40 percent less than the recent card and they say well i'll give you this if i buy everything 
sometimes I'm not looking to sell my entire collection at once. I want to piece it out throughout the day. Come with a good price that's reasonable. If you come super low in the beginning, that dealer's going to be turned off to you and not want to work a deal. If I give them like my rock bottom price and then they kind of go lower, and that would probably be the one of my biggest pet peeves. Taking stuff without asking, that's probably about it. <laughs> I'm the organizer, and so like when I go home and I go to organize, I look and it's just these, it's just thrown in there, and everything's like label. I don't know. It's I guess it's OCD, so it's kind of that's that would be the only thing that I would have to complain about. This Pokemon box has four packs of Shining Fates, one Jumbo Pikachu card, and then one regular Pikachu card. My name is Merlin of Merworld Cards. What are y'all doing today? Uh, we're just opening some packs. Did you get any big hits? Uh, one, one good one so far. Can you show that to me? And so what is the chase card out of these packs? This box, the Darkness of Lays, there's a Charizard VMAX. Ooh, That's the best one in the set. It's always Charizard. Yeah. Why do you think it's always Charizard? I mean, they just, it's, it's a very popular Pokemon and there's How a lot. How come not Mewtwo or Mew? I guess people just like Charizard more. Do you play Pokemon Go? Uh, not really. Oh, I do. <laughs> How about you? Um, I play sometimes occasionally, but I mostly collect cards because I think that they're cute. How did the trading go? Oh, uh, we're... I didn't do much, but yeah. yeah. Did you make any trades at all? No, I was looking to sell a Watson uh, patch, but he's over there doing it real quick. Oh, awesome. What's your name? Colin. I'm Merlin from Moral Cards. Pleasure meeting you. How about you? How was your trading? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So this is Merlin from Moral Cards. We had a great show. I learned a lot on how to be a customer, how to will, deal, trade, and work the room. I hope you learned as well. I'll see y'all in the next show. This is Merlin from Moral Cards. Bye-bye, everyone. Sitting at the table.